Hey everybody, welcome back to another Excel Better tutorial. Uh, I wanted to, in this video, cover using VLOOKUPs. I am going to assume that you already have some familiarity with them, but what I wanted to do is just kind of show some other ways that we could be using VLOOKUPs to make our lives a little bit easier working with spreadsheets. So I'm going to show you how you could convert months if they're not in the format that you'd want them to be. Um, and I'm going to show you also how you can convert, you know, locations using VLOOKUPs. Um, and also how you can actually use the, instead of the default false um, component of the VLOOKUP, how you can change that to true to be able to utilize you know, some different date features with the VLOOKUP. So let's start out first with the, the month example. So let's say you have a data set um, that is set up in such a way where you've got months in here formatted in a way that you, know, you just don't want to see it. So if it says, you know, J-A-N instead of January or, you know, Feb instead of February, now you could kind of go through one by one and change those. You could filter this, um, you know, to and change all, you know, the Jans to Januaries and, and so on. Um, but that's going to be a little bit more time consuming than what we would like. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I would go about correcting this or getting it the way that I want to see it. So first of all, I would take the data set. I would, you know, highlight the whole range. So I'm going to take this whole column. I'm going to copy this and I'm just going to bring it to another tab and I'm going to paste that in. And then I'm going to go up to the data tab in the ribbon up here, click into that. And while I'm still selected on this uh, month column that I've pasted in, I'm gonna go ahead and go over to the remove duplicates section and just left click into that. And it's going to ask if I'm okay with deleting everything in column E, that is a duplicate. I am, that's exactly what I wanna do. I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And it says that there was 181 duplicate values that were found removed, and now there's just 10 unique values that are left. So now I can go up here and I can actually type in what I want to see this as. Now, and it could be different things. It could say, you know, if I want to see this as January, I could type January. If I'd prefer to see this as, you know, Jan 2019 or 2020, you know, we could do that. So we can have this formatted in different ways, but, um, you know, whatever way you want to see that, you can go ahead and plug that in here. But I'm going to assume that we want to just see it like the full month instead of the abbreviated month. So I'm going to do that for each of these. So it's like February, March, April, May is fine, but we're going to do that for the lookups anyway. June, July, August, and September. So now we've got our months put in here. And now I'm going to go ahead and actually just name this um, range of cells here. So I'm going to call this my months conversion with an underscore there, because if we're actually going to be using this name box, uh, we, we can't have spaces in there. So I'm going to call this months conversion. And then I'm going to come back to my original data set and I'm going to insert a column here and I'm going to say equals VLOOKUP A2. I'm going to start typing the the name that I, I had there, which was months conversion. So once I see it, I can double left click or I can type the whole thing. I'm going to go ahead and double left click into that. And it's going to ask what column it's in. And I know it's in the second column and it's going to be false because we are looking for an exact match. So if I copy that down, now I have the abbreviated month is filled out to be the exact month that I'd want it to be. We can check some of these cells, you know, um, AUG is now August and, you know, SEP is now September, just as we would suspect. And because this is still a VLOOKUP, I'm now just going to copy this and I'm going to paste values. And to pull up this menu, by the way, I did uh, control alt V, which is a nice little shortcut, um, that you're able to use to pull up a, a paste menu. You can do all sorts of things. You can paste comments, but in this case, I just want to paste values. I'm going to hit okay. And now I can see that I got rid of the, uh, view lookup that I had in there. And, and there's a couple different ways that we could do this. Now we could just say, I'm going to copy this month over here and delete this original. And now I have the months that I wanted in the format that I want them to be in all the way down. So that's one way we could go about using VLOOKUPs to convert something. 
I want to show you another thing that can be useful as far as location. I know sometimes you can be working with a data set and, you know, there might be one area of a company or, or one group of people that, you know, has uh, a, a certain meaning assigned to a certain thing. Like, for example, like a ship code that could be maybe valuable to logistics, but maybe the sales team doesn't really know what the ship code means. So it can be useful to be able to actually have a table to convert that. So if you wanted to say, okay, here's all the ship codes, but ship code one really correlates to, you know, um, Los Angeles and ship code two correlates to New York or whatever actually happens to be, we can make those updates. Same kind of thing with the month thing, um, but we'll just kind of show another another example that I, I use quite frequently in, um, you know, the corporate job that I have. So same concept, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, copy this come over to my tab, paste that in, and then I'm going to go, still in the data tab, go over here, however, to remove duplicates. It's going to ask if I want to remove everything in column H that's duplicated. I do. I'm going to hit OK. And now this is where I could actually decide what I want to specify these to be. So again, like if we wanted to say this was LA and this is New York, um, maybe this is Dallas, and um, I mean, right, let's see, what else we got here? Seattle, Chicago, let's see how many cities I can think of abbreviations here. Um, uh, you know what, just for fun, we're gonna make these LA and New York City as well. We're gonna say that there can be more than one ship code going to cities. Um, okay, so we're gonna have that. I'm going to go ahead and name this table my ship code location. I'm going to come back to my original tab over here, insert a column, call this ship code location, so equals VLOOKUP, A2. Uh, the table array that we want is going to be in our ship code location, so I'm going to start typing that. Uh, you can either, again, in this case, you can actually hit tab as well if you don't want to double left click on that, so I'm going to hit tab, so it's got that ship code location that I wanted. I know that the, the converted data is in the second column, and I want it to be an exact match. So now, if we copy that down, we will have all of our converted data. And so now, people who are using this from another team that maybe don't know what ship code 4 is, realizes that it can go to Seattle, and ship code 5 goes to Chicago, and so on. So that can become a little bit more meaningful by converting the data in that way. And once again, I'm going to just go ahead and copy, and then Control-Alt-V, and values, and just hard code that. Okay. <clears throat> so those are both examples where we're going to use a VLOOKUP in kind of the more traditional sense where we're looking for an exact match, which again is by default false. That's how we're going to find that exact match. But if there's the opportunity to put in the exact match and you're saying false to get that, you might be wondering, well, when would you ever use, you know, true or when would you use something where you're not looking for an exact match? And I'm going to go ahead and show you how you could actually utilize that functionality with a VLOOKUP to pull back some information. So, I have already have my conversion tables that I've been kind of building out that has, you know, the months example we just went through and the ship code examples. But there's another example here with the dates we're looking at where we could say if there's a table of data that has, let's say, key dates and when we're going to be in different phases of a project or some process. So let's say on January 1st, 2020, we entered phase one of a project. And we know that on uh, February 15th, we're going to begin phase two. So from this table, you realize that, you know, if there's a date that's between January 1st and February 14th, you're going to be in phase one. You're going to be in phase one until you hit 215 when you start phase two. Same kind of idea from phase two to phase three, that from the 15th of February until March 9th, you're going to be in phase two. Right? So you can get all that information from this table and the way it's set up. But, you know, if you come over here to a date conversion 
and let's say you have January 2nd, what could be useful would be to be able to have a VLOOKUP or some formula that's going to actually tell you what phase you're in from this lookup value without that lookup value being exactly represented here. Because if we were just going to try to do a normal exact match V lookup, we'd come over here and say find January 2nd, find it in our data here, which I've, I've called months. So we find this in the months, and then we're going to do two, and then we do false. We're going to see that there's we get an NA. And we get that NA because there's not that exact match. Now, we can do a couple of things to actually get this to return information. We could change this to January 1st, and then it's going to find exactly January 1st right here, and it's going to return it. But again, if it's January 2nd or 3rd or whatever the case might be, it's not going to find January 3rd, so it says NA. But with the way the actual true component of the VLOOKUP works, using that approximate match, the approximate will look in between values. So in this table, if I if I put this to true, and I'll show you in a second here, by putting it to true, it's going to say, okay, um, you know, it's going to start in this table, but it's going to say, essentially, what is that between, which is exactly what we want. So let me just show you, changing this from false to true. Now it's going to say, ah, January 3rd is between the 1st and the 15th, so we're still in phase one. It's not triggered here. We're still in this range. We're still going to call this phase one, which can be useful to know, especially with a large, much larger data set that you could be working with. You know, if there's a, a date on somebody's calendar and somebody says, well, hey, on January 7th, you know, we're going to be doing this thing, and what phase are we going to be in? Well, using this true component is going to let you to capture that range. So if we copy that down, we can actually see that this is working all the way as it should. Like let's take February 8th, for example. Well, February 8th, it still isn't hitting that February 15th yet, so we're still in phase one, and that's what's showing up, just like we would want it to. And for March 24th, let's come over to our conversion table again. March 24th, it's greater than March 10th, still less than December 30th when we actually begin phase four of this. So it correctly realizes that we are in phase three. So that's how you're able to use the approximate match, and you can use that with dates to be able to update your data as well and kind of pull that over. Um, so th those are a few different uses of VLOOKUPs. I know that, again, this assumes that you're already using VLOOKUPs. I will plan to kind of, you know, create some videos about other things that are useful with VLOOKUPs, troubleshooting VLOOKUPs, what can go wrong. I can do a full video about, you know, beginning VLOOKUPs, like you're starting from square one, um, but just wanted to kind of show you some useful things that I've done um, in, in my job in using VLOOKUPs and was hoping that you guys would be able to make use of some of them as well. So thanks a lot for following along and let me know if you have any questions or comments.